Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Beyond the Beat. My name is Dave McKenzie, and this is another Friday afternoon at Beyond the Beat. We're going to be giving you all sorts of great master classes. This is a, uh, an overview of Luna. Luna is a recording software that has been made by a great company named Universal Audio. It's their flagship software. It's uh, considered a DAW. What a DAW actually is is a digital audio workstation. And what it basically is is a huge uh, recording device that you can just install on your computer as software, and it allows you to make music at home. And making music at home is really, really fun, and it's wonderful, uh, and it's, uh, it's one of the greatest things about modern, the modern age of music making is that you don't need to go and spend a small fortune to go into the recording studio and uh, document your work. So let's jump right into it. There we go. So when you, when you open up the software um, for the first time, or you know, for you know, the millionth time, if you're like me, you can, uh, you can come in and, uh, and make some decisions. I've already labeled this Luna Overview. All right, and uh, sort of uh, we, we decide all sorts of different important factors here. Some of it doesn't really matter. You could tap in a tempo if you know the tempo of the song that you're that you want to record, or if you've just been jamming something and you want to tap it in, that's actually really handy. Um, you can dictate the time signature here, obviously, right? It shows you that. Um, here, this location um, window tells you where your sessions are being saved. So I, I save mine to my um, external drive so that I don't bog down my, my, you know, my computer. It's, it's got a lot of programs on it. So of course you want to keep things running smoothly. And then here it has a list of all of the sessions that I've done. I just did a stream and uh, you know, I, re I recently recorded that. Uh, amazingly, while you're working, you don't need to save anything. It's automatically all saved. It's very cool. Um, here, there's uh, when you're on your way in, you can go and watch all sorts of great tutorials that are done by uh, the people over at UA, and they're really quite good. Um, they're almost as good as the ones that are done here at Beyond the Beat, but they're, they're you know, they're just a, like maybe just a peg below, a peg, a small peg, all right? And then up here, if you, if I, if you can follow my mouse, um, you can minimize the window or keep it big. Um, this always brings you right back. Uh, create a session is where we're at right now. Discover, uh, what that means is they discover where your wallet is as soon as you click on this button. So, uh, you know, hang on to your, your money. Uh, manage, here's my installations and uh, the devices that I sort of own and the devices that I can use. Uh, and, and then the ones that I can start like you know, the first hit's always free when you hook up with a drug dealer. So you can start your demo of uh, uh, anything you want within the software. And then after the 14 days, you have to go and buy it. And it's not cheap. Um, and then here are the settings. So this is my main UA device. I've got the Apollo. I've also got a satellite, which is, uh, which is great. It allows me to have a little bit of extra recording juice. So let's go in and create. So I'm going to create this session. Um, you just, uh, you just hit it here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, my first track that I'm going to open up, I'll call it a talk back track for, uh, and it'll be for my microphone, um, so that you can always hear me. I'm actually, uh, so over here on your far left, you should be able to see, um, that we can have this sort of create new tracks dialogue. All right. That's, they, they set that up for you. Um, uh, they give you the, the main track is always there when you open up a session and all of your other tracks will feed this main track. This is your master track. So um, if we want anything else, we, we're just going to open it up. So it says create new track. The type of track that it defaults to is an audio track. That's what I would like to open up, a mono audio track. Keep it open just in case you can. Um, all right. So now, now we can get into the software. So you can see what uh, I, I did there without just explaining it because I didn't want to keep make you bored is um, within the track, you can you can you get to decide where the input is. All right. So um, I have a like a whole bunch of preamps that I choose from, and they power my microphones. So the the microphone that I'm using here, this little SM7B, is plugged into channel 13. Um, it's a Focusrite preamp, so that's what I had to decide there. So um, so my input's there. All right. So that's, uh, that's track one. I could easily record here um, with this mic, right? You just have to hit record enable and then, uh, and then just um, uh, you can either just hit record up here and then press play 
This is on loop record. We don't need to right now. Um, or you can actually, on your keyboard, on your like typing keyboard, you can hit Control or Command um, space bar. And it should record. There we go. Now it's recording. Blah, blah. Just like obviously a work of art. We'll go in. <coughs> Excuse me. Little COVIDian cough. It's not a joke, by the way. I shouldn't joke about COVID. It's a sad state of affairs. Uh, so here's my track. I can pitch things. Uh, I can sort of, uh, I can control the, the volume, right, of, uh, of my track within this waveform within this clip and I can also record uh, control the volume of the track here over uh, in this little window and I can also control the volume of the track here so we'll just put it back to zero and uh, and we'll go back here and take a look so this is kind of cool so we can actually just listen back to what I the, the great work I did Blah, 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 blah. So that's kind of cool, right? That's like, I know you want to hear it again. And then here, you can actually adjust the the pitch. Should record. There we go. Now it's recording. Blah, 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 blah. Should record. There we go. Now it's recording. Blah, 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 so there you have it, um, my work of art. Um, uh, you can work with it uh, within the window. And then there's all sorts of little tweaks that you can do. Um, this is like a, so this is a clip, um, a little piece of sound, they call them clips. And uh, if you, on your keyboard, you press T, it will expand it to the right. And you can sort of see, you know, more clearly the waveform and you can work with it in detail. And if you hit R, which I was doing there, there's R, it shrinks it to like nothing so you can sort of that's really handy to be able to do that so try to remember that scratch down these uh these little uh, keyboard shortcuts they're super helpful they're maybe not the most important when you just start recording with the DAW but eventually you're going to want to fly you want to move fast because you want to make music with uh with a bit of haste not like you know rushing anything or that's not important. You don't want to rush anything, but you do want to work at a good speed. So these clips, once you record them, these audio clips, you can do all sorts of editing. Like that's like a fade. So if you wanted like a smooth transition out of that part, I'll have to blah, 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 blah. You'll notice that it got quieter, right? So we could do like a long fade here. Um, if I just go up here with my mouse and grab this this like sort of uh, like fade point, you see that little arrow. When you get to the top, you can grab it, and we'll listen here. All right, there we go. Now it's recording. Blah 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 blah. All right, there we go. Now, so that's kind of cool that you can, uh, sometimes you want to fade, like maybe someone hit a symbol or something, you recorded that and you might, might want it to fade out. It's just editing, you know, it's just editing. And then you can trim your, your clip here at the bottom. So it's sort of like a, a, the, the tool, your, your mouse, it's like a smart tool. So you just have to sort of experiment like this, uh, everything arrow here allows you to, to sort of grab the clip and move it anywhere on the screen, or if there was another track, you could put it on another track, right? Um, and then, whoa, let's, uh, let's expand it again. Oh, it made a copy, because I moved it to another track. Let's, I'm going to hit undo, all right? So that was Apple Z. That's my favorite keyboard command, is Apple Z, because it lets you, uh, it lets you stop, um, or sorry, reverse what just went wrong, or something like that. So we grab the, the track again, move it around. And then if, if you see here, if you're in this part of the track here, uh, the top part of the track, it's the selector tool. So right now, I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that if you can follow my mouse up here, I'll try to enlarge it. Oh, that's very annoying to watch, eh? Um, and I hit snap. So when, it's, when snap is highlighted, okay, that means that we snap to the grid, 
you can see the counter here, the grid. So the grid is um, is that uh, is, is set to quarter notes. We can set the grid to eighth notes. Now you can see there's twice as many lines, right? And we can set the grid to sixteenth notes. And now there's a lot. So if you're doing like a if you're editing a drum part or something that's a little bit busier, or uh, someone's shredding a little bit more, then you can do that. And you can just sort of control what what your edit points will snap to, okay? If snap is on. If snap is not on, now it's freehand. You know, like you can you can go anywhere, and that's sometimes really valuable if you're working with like a vocal part and you want to like edit uh, where the vocal starts or stops or something like that. I may be going into too much detail with this, uh, with the editing functions here. I think I might be. So, so but a snap is actually quite important. So keep, uh, so snap allows you to sort of within time, okay, you can see that this is a time-based recording uh, software. And doing more of an overview. Let's, let's do a big overview. I went directly into sort of um, recording audio, which I, I feel like people are going to mostly want to do to begin with is maybe like just set up a microphone and record an acoustic guitar. Um, let me uh, just uh, quickly go into OBS here. You'll be able to see thousands of me. And now here we are. So hi, everybody. Yeah, so recording is not um, something that uh, you can learn instantly. Okay, there are some nuances, but I want to really you know, qualify, like I, I sort of went down a little bit of a rabbit hole there and uh, because it's, uh, it's pretty exciting and there's a lot of detail to talk about, but I'd like to make this as unintimidating as possible for you. Um, I'd like you to know that recording is actually really fun and the software that people are writing nowadays um, is, is so smart, okay? The software actually teaches you as you use it. It's fantastic. It's a, it's, um, every time I go in and record something or do a tutorial or I work with a video editing software, I find that I, I discover something new. And I feel that that's just because it's being written in a really intelligent way by the coders and, uh, and the people that are working. There's going to be snags and it's going to be frustrating sometimes, but it's, it's so worth it to get over that hurdle and just to not be afraid of technology. Like you can make your own music and, uh, and I can help you and you can use this great software. So that's that. So um, I'm just going to uh, go back to my main teaching window and we'll go back into UA. Here we go. So let's do a little bit more of an overview. Um, uh, as I do this, I'm going to shrink my track window. So if you go down to the bottom here, um, you'll see a little uh, down and up arrow, right? As soon as I hit where this my track here, the talkback track, connects with the, uh, it sits above the, ma the main track. And I, if I engage my mouse, I can shrink my track. I could shrink the main track too. Right? And you see this little level. This is the volume of the main track. So if I press play, um, blah, 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 you'll notice it feeds the main track, right? So all of the tracks that you record will feed this main track. So let's do a big overview of the whole screen, okay? Let's just take a, a little look through uh, what they have set up. So it works just like a, a tape deck, all right? So up here, this is probably the, the most important sort of window to look at right now. Uh, this, 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 this sets up your view, right? Um, so this, uh, this goes right to your mix window. You'll notice that it's a different, it starts to look like a recording console where you have all of your different tracks and uh, you can adjust the volume down here and uh, once you've got like you know 20 tracks that you've laid down on your multi-track recording you can adjust the volume on all of the tracks um, and then uh, this uh, I'm not really sure info let's just click on something oh yeah so you can sort of control if, if we've written something down here right um, uh, there's a narrower track view. If you've got a lot of tracks and you want to see them all in one window, then you can sort of hit nav, navigate maybe. And then here it's just tracks. So then it gets rid of, um, we've got this bin over here that has like a list of tracks that we've recorded and you can hide tracks. Like I could hide the main track if I wanted to, or I could let you see it, right? So sometimes you might not want to see all the tracks because maybe you're just working on some drum parts and it's annoying to look at everything. So, um, so, so you may not want to see that and you can actually just have just the tracks, okay? 
and uh, oh, and here's the monitor controls over here, so you can get rid of that if you don't want to see it. So, um, so that's how that works. We can toggle here with your mouse in between the edit window where we do most of our recording, right? Where we set up our record enable and stuff. And this is our mix window. So once we've done our re recording and we want to adjust levels, we go over here. Uh, the, I never use this mouse to do this, okay? I usually just hit um, command or apple sign, like control, and then equal sign on my keyboard. Boom, boom. Uh, and I've just got a hot key for that or like a, a shortcut, we'll call that, that a shortcut. Here's your metronome setting. Um, when you go, when you hover over it, you'll see down and up arrows. Um, you can control the, uh, the BPMs. Okay, that's beats per minute. Or if you double click, you can just type it in. I'll just go back to 120. Uh, and uh, so beats per minute is just, uh, it is what it is. It's, uh, it's, it's however many beats happen per minute. So this would be, you know, there'd be 120 beats per minute. So it'd be two per second. Um, here is our click volume. The click is insanely loud off the bat. So just you, you can key it in or you can, um, I guess I have to key it in now. Let's go one. So now it's like 10 dB. Let's go to minus, even still. That's really loud. I'm gonna bring, bring it in. an alternate click sound would be nice. We'll see if they fix it. Happy face so that it doesn't sound rude. All right. Um, and I'll just say that this is coming from beyond the beat so that they, it puts me on the map. Cool. And then I'll just send it to them. I don't know if that's what the feedback's about or for or whatever, but I just used it for that. It's cool. Counter, uh, we can have it to minutes and seconds. If you want, if you're doing something really long uh, and maybe it's not music oriented, maybe it's a lot of dialogue that you're recording and you just want to work that way, that's cool. Um, samples, sometimes you want to work in samples. Uh, it's generally bars and beats for music for me. And that's that. So here, look at this. If I click on this, it just puts my cursor, my main cursor. You see this big long line, wherever that is. And then I press space bar to start it and space bar to stop it. So your, your space bar on your keyboard is very helpful. I'm going to actually turn the metronome off here. Here's where you turn it off, not there. Right, you just click here or you click here. If it's orange, it's on. If it's not orange, it's, it's not on. So this works like an old cassette tape, right? You just have rewind, fast forward brings you to the end of the recording, stop, play, right? Record and then loop record. So maybe, maybe the, some, you, um, some of this stuff I haven't actually gone over yet. So, uh, so this is the monitor. Uh, this is sort of workflow. Um, interesting. Oh, cool. So you can sort of display. Um, you can duplicate or separate or shift or cut or paste. Um, and you can sort of, you know, like I could duplicate that maybe just by clicking on it here. And then, uh, so there's, so there's editing features that you can have access to if you click on these lines. Um, all of this is, uh, is, is sort of interesting. I didn't really know about it uh, until now. Um, so you can separate a like a clip. So if I wanted to separate this and move it, I could just put the cursor there and click separate. And now nice. It's just, it's, it's way too nice. So, um, so there's also this here. What do we got here? Free roll and post roll. This is very valuable. Okay. Um, I don't want to get too into it, but sometimes you want to be doing like a, a, yeah, forget it. Don't worry about that too much. Um, it's just not, it's, I, I can explain it, but it's, I think it's better for another video. Um, so yeah, and then if you click on it, this, it just brings you back to the normal screen. So, so here's your MIDI um, stuff. Uh, this has uh, MIDI is like musical instrument device interface or something like that. I think that's what MIDI means, and it's uh, it's really fun to work in MIDI. It's it's like using like a, a controller, um, a keyboard controller to to make like 
beats and stuff or to lay down tracks and and the keyboard controller is assigned to different software which is really all about this is i guess for mix down right so we can um, if we're going to mix down a track or something like that so anyways i'm just going to turn turn all of those off but uh that's a, a little section that i haven't put a lot of time into but it's actually pretty good right so then here all up here is this is our ruler right so you can just see um there's there's a couple of different rulers here right like there's this top ruler there's this blue ruler um and i don't know and then there's like just time there's a time-based ruler here right like two minutes or whatever it's kind of good to know and then here's your your meter right this is your tempo now on the tempo ruler if I click on that, it's, it's a drop down. Now, sometimes you may want to change the tempo of a song, uh, maybe, or maybe the song just changes and you want to like be, still be able to play to the metronome. So you can write in a different, um, tempo later on in the song or something or whatever. So that's kind of handy. I've never found it to work super well with audio recording, but, um, I'm sure there are people that, that can make it just sing. Um, here, um, this is the time signature. If I click plus, uh, it gives you this. Um, and at maybe the third bar, maybe we want the song to change to three, four or something like that. Sometimes that does happen, right? Um, so I'm just going to not do that. And then markers. Um, sometimes it's just handy to put in markers, you know, like maybe something. I don't know why. I'll apply. So marker one, maybe at like, Maybe the chorus starts here or something like that, right? So I'm just going to hit undo or whatever. But um, it's cool to be able to, you know, write comments and, and leave markers uh, on the track. And, uh, and, and just sort of, it, it, it helps later if you're building like a really big session and you want to jump to different parts of the song or something like that. You may want to use markers and you can color code them and stuff like that. So that's kind of cool. So that's that whole little section. This... Um, so link, edit, play selection. So sometimes you might not want, so, so that's a kind of a complicated one. It's not that complicated, but like, so, so sometimes you might want to be working on something while it's playing back. And so if you unlink that, then you can sort of work on it and like move, do stuff while the song's still playing. Maybe you're work, sitting here with an artist or something and they're listening back and you're like, oh, I have to do a couple of little edits while this plays back. So you don't want to waste time. So then um, you unlink your, your edit and your playback selection. So um, that's like one use for it. That's not important for you right now. Um, auto scroll toggles automatically along the timeline scrolling. Shift A is the hotkey for that. So, so yeah, see how it's like scrolls along. Like sometimes if the song is really long or something like that, right? Um, you want the, it go, to go to the next screen as it scrolls along. So that's what auto scroll is all about. Um, loop, you know what that's all about, it loops. And uh, here you can see, like this is measure one, right? Measure one to measure two. Maybe we want to link that, like uh, loop that, and it's looped. So now it's just looping measure one. And, uh, and that's handy. So that's how the, that's how the ruler works. Um, and yeah, I guess, uh, we'd like to maybe take a look at, um, adding more tracks to this session now. Uh, I might, excuse me for a second. <coughs> I might go into our, I'm going to hit Apple equal sign. And we'll go into the mix window here. Cool, right? Like I might want to put a reverb on the voice. That's very reverby, right? Um, I'll just make a little note. So, um, yeah, I don't want to get into too much detail, but n normally when you open up, like we usually use reverb in a bus. Oh, that sounds really crazy to you if you're not if you're a novice and you're just starting out or whatever but it it's see how it says wet here 
Um, I think I can actually go in uh, into OBS and do um, screen close up. So let's go in. Come on. Okay. So now you can see a little bit better. Um, it says wet. Usually when you open up the reverb, it's wet because it assumes that your reverb is going to be like on an, a, a separate bus and then you send some of your audio to that bus. Anyways, if you put a reverb on, you can just turn the wetness, almost exclusively use it. I don't know why. It's probably like to a fault, but that's me. Um, full of faults and, uh, and good things too. Anyway, so you can sort of toggle here. So this is called a plug-in. See that little widget? This is like a, um, an emulation of a really famous and fantastic um, reverberation that Universal Audio has made. This was used, this very plug-in actually was used on Adele's song Rolling in the Deep. Um, you'll remember her voice was kind of good for that recording, I would say. It was uh, kind of excellent, so you should... Uh, you know, dig it. Um, let me go back to OBS, and we're gonna go, uh, I'm gonna go back to this. Hi, it's me. So I hope you guys are enjoying this live stream. I'm enjoying making it for you, and I like, uh, I like sharing this stuff with you. So if you really dig it, please subscribe to the Beyond the Beat YouTube channel, and give us your feedback. We wanna build, I guess, like a bit of a, a hub that al like allows us to you know, share a lot of great information and great music with you. And we want to just build a nice community for mostly to be here. And, uh, and you know, my name is Dave McKenzie. This is Beyond the Beat, which is a recording studio and a, and a teach like a private music school in the beaches in the east end of the city near the lake. So um, we'd, like to, we'd like to build this YouTube channel primarily for our students so that they have a, a really great resource and that we can offer them more as a school. But we're also hoping that people, you know, out there in, uh, in different parts of the world or, or different parts of the city or the country can enjoy what we do too. It's just nice to share it. So if you like it, please let us know, all right, and, uh, and stay tuned for more. I'm just going to go back to uh, my main teaching window here and head back to Universal Audio's uh, platform. So yeah, so these are plugins here. You can, you can add... You know, you can make this bigger or smaller if you want, right? You can add inserts to your tracks, okay? Um, you can add more than one. Um, that's pretty cool. And uh, right now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this one away. Um, I'll just exit out, and now it's gone. Because we don't really need it. Um, but uh, I just wanted to explain that in the mix window, you can do all sorts of things like that. You can... Um, do ta tape emulation, uh, which is really fantastic, right? Like, I don't know if you've, of course, you've heard recordings that have, were done in the 70s when there was no digital recording or very, like, I don't think there was any in the 70s. Um, everything was recorded to a reel-to-reel, -reel, um, generally, or like maybe like, you know, demos recorded on just a cassette tape. But um, when it was recorded to reel-to-reel, -reel, it just sounded so good. Okay, there's something about the sound of tape that is just excellent. Like it's like, it just gives it this je ne sais quoi. It's, it's really super good. So um, Universal Audio allows you to just um, throw tape saturation on every track or, or maybe you just want to throw it on your master track. Um, you know, that's kind of cool. I know I don't want to start the demo because I'll love it, right? Um, so that's how it works. Um, you can like here, right here in this input, we've also got like a like I've got um, a little signal chain already going, you know, um, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then, and then these are sends. So remember when I was talking about a bus? Um, well, your sends uh, can go to a different track, right? So you can send um signal from this track to to other tracks or whatever maybe i want to send it to a hardware device that i have i don't want to uh, more complicated than i want to get um cues or one and two this has to do with monitoring and, and sending headphone mixes to artists like imagine if you're recording with a drummer 
and you're the singer and the drummer wants to hear the metronome really, really loud, but it's so loud that it actually hurts you and you can't even think straight because you're trying to sing, well, you would probably want a separate cue track. Your cue track would have maybe very little metronome and the drummers would have a lot. So that's what the cues are all about. So that's what we use those for. And, uh, and what else? And this is our master control right over here. Here are the cue. I know how all of that works, like headphone mixes and cues and uh, things like that. So it's it's probably for another video. Um, here we can uh, control our volume of our track or we can mute the output if we want it, but I don't want to do that. And, you know, you still have access, like you can still record from this window. We can hit record and then we can start, but it's, it's not often done. And uh, I guess soloing is kind of cool. Like you can solo different tracks, like say there was a, just we wanted to hear what the kick drum was doing. You could just solo that one track and play it back so that you could hear it. And you can say, oh, the kick drum has a weird rattle. Maybe we need to re-record the drums or maybe we need to do something. So that's how that works. Um, what else? What else, friends? Um, yeah. There's, uh, we can expand these tracks. There's large, there's small, right? So here on my input monitoring track, I just set up a couple of plugins just to make my voice have that cool recording sort of, you know, like a radio announcer sound. And, uh, and now we can see it. Now we can't, right? So you can see that they're listed, but it is nice to have that larger track. But, um, and then, uh, then we could close everything. I don't know why you'd want to but you can. So maybe you don't want to look at it. I don't want to see it anymore. Now I do. Whatever. Right. Um, modifiers. What does this do? Oh, interesting. I don't really know. I'll have to get back to that. Um, remove. Oh yeah, that's pretty handy. You could just remove any of the uh, additional tracks that you have. So, but I don't want to do that. So we go and then copy. So you may want to copy some of the plugins that you have on one of your tracks and move them to another track, right? Um, and then set default. So you could um, have plugins that maybe you want to always have on your tracks when your sessions open up or something. So you could do that, right? Um, and that's that. Uh, fix slots. Whoa, look at all the um, inserts. Remember I was saying you could put lots on? Well, look at all of those slots. So that's kind of cool, right? Um, and yeah, that's just, uh, that's how this works. So let's go back to the edit window and we'll continue on our happy way, all right? So we'll just continue on. Um, this little bin here. So actually what I would like to do is I'd like to open up um, a software instrument track. Um, we're gonna do that now. So we're gonna just go over and open it up. So um, there's a, there's a, a a keyboard command for this, if you go shift, control, N, this dialog comes up here and then we get to make some decisions, right? How many tracks we're gonna make. So let's do, uh, let's go here. And remember I was talking about bus tracks. Well, you can open those up here. Um, you could uh, add a bus or we could do an instrument track. Uh, instrument tracks are software synths. Um, you, we, I have a number of different soft, uh, software sort of patches that I have access to because I've purchased them. Some of them are free. Um, and Universal Audio, the, uh, Shape is free. All right, so you can open up Shape and have access to it. And, uh, and so this software instrument is going to default to Shape. So I'm going to say, okay, yeah, let's do, let's do, let's do one track here. I could, I could do two or, or whatever, right? But at the stay one, keep it stereo, um, you know, keep it named as an instrument track. So I've, I've clicked make it and now the computer is baking it in the little oven that it has and it's gonna come out. It's gotta get its oven mitts on so it's taking a little bit of time and you can see the beach ball comes up when the computer's worried about burning its hands. So it's done that and now here's the track and our little shape, my little piano, I, I'll show you. It defaults to the Ravel piano track so you know if, uh, if we wanted to record, we could just sort of hit record. Right? Or if we wanted to record with the metronome, we would click and we'd turn on the metronome 
and we could even go back here and we could go uh, I could actually I'll move my widget and erase this and we'll go back and we'll hit record All right And that's a MIDI track. Uh, and you'll notice it's, it's significantly different than an audio track. So, um, f so I'm going to remember when you can take, bring your mouse down here and, and open up uh, the track a little bit more. So you can see here, these are all the notes that I just played. Um, some of them I played purposefully early and some of them were a little bit too quiet over here. So there's, we have a lot of control um, over that. So in MIDI, it's quite unique because when you've played something, it's, uh, it's, it's sort of gone into the computer in a digital manner, so it's not like audio. So, so if, we did, if we wanted this chord, right, that's an A minor chord that I played. If I wanted that to be A major, I could sharp this note. Sounds a little odd now, but I didn't want it to be major. I just wanted you to know that you could move notes around after you've played them. It's so cool, isn't it? And you can quantize too. If I hit the Q, this little dialog comes up. All right. This says uh, apply quantize. Now we haven't su suggested what the grid should be. So let's go 16th notes and we'll quantize. And that moves all of these, you know, um, oh, this is sort of set to auto apply. Um, okay. So it's quantized now. So, um, so now the note should be in time. And then if, if uh, so that's kind of cool that they're perfectly in time, right? That's how people are able to make dance music and electronic music uh, very efficiently and make it sound so groovy as they can play, they can, you know, make it work. So if we bring our cursor over here and we hit T and we open things up, we can see that some of these notes were played a little bit too quiet, okay? So um, when, you, uh, when you hit this little mixing um, toggle thing here it opens up the dynamics and it allows us to um, I'm going to get rid of my little widget here um, it allows us to adjust the volume so if I if I press on this note and highlight it now you see that note here and and I can uh, sorry now it's lassoed everything so if I go here I'm going to just move my my cursor over here oh it brings it back there we go but now as long as that everything tool comes up, then it's now I've made so I've made them all the same sort of volume. We can make them louder. I could last through them all here, and I'm just like that was pretty bright, eh? Did it take your head off a little bit. So, um, and then you can last through them all here, and you can make them longer. Um, I'm gonna do that, and then just make this guy longer. That sounds weird because we want it to be staccato, right? That little part. So I'm going to undo it. And then uh, maybe we'll just make them a little bit <coughs> longer to like this one note, right? So, and it's obviously too loud. So we're going to bring it, I'm going to lasso them and bring them back a bit. Oh, there's a, an unintentional loop. There we go. So you'll notice with MIDI recording, um, with these software instruments, you have an incredible amount of control once you've recorded something. So um, the cool thing is here, uh, so let's, um, if I click on this, now in our, um, there's, it, it decides here, uh, depending on which track you've got highlighted, it decides uh, what it shows you. So I've highlighted the, the instrument track. Um, now and now we can see that shape is here. So I'm going to click on this, and now our widget will come back. And if we didn't like the piano, see it's it's got our uh, Ravel light piano in, in track one, uh, part one here. Uh, we can layer synthesized sounds by adding different layers by like adding a different like maybe one a lead part here. And now 
now we would hear, amazingly, we would hear this synthesizer with the piano. It's like a weird synthesized trumpet. It's like Miles, it's, I guess they're saying it sounds like Miles Davis in like the 70s, but it, it really doesn't. So I'm going to go, I don't know how to make it, oh, <laughs> I don't know how to make it none. Well, how about maybe press none? Maybe that's an idea. Okay, so, oh, I do want shape. Here we go. Come back. Um, and we're going to click. And we're back here. So, like, we can change the sound. You know, I, I really like this little Tyne MK1 light. It's a cool little keyboard. So now I didn't maybe want piano. Sounds kind of 70s and hip to my, my drive. You know, what's up, cats? So... Yeah, so you can do a lot with MIDI. This is scraping the surface, but no, I think you have a little bit of a basic overview at this point. Uh, you know, it's it's a bit of a learning curve for me. Dave McKenzie here at Beyond the Beat trying to cram too much maybe into this live stream, but I, you know, uh, it's all coming from the heart. I really want you to learn about this software. I mean, really what you have to do is you have to get yourself a little UA device and get the software and dive in. It's, it's, it's so much fun. I'm not just saying that. Um, it's wonderful to make music and to just let your imagination go on a little rampage and you can, you know, uh, muck about adding tracks and 